Robert. Hey, this is going to be a fun one because you've had a great weekend. Yeah, we have. We, uh, we launched AppTap Revenge 3 last uh, Tuesday afternoon, and we've been number one all week, and it's, uh, it's a fun ride. Who are you? I'm Bart. I'm the founder and CEO of Tapulous, and we make TapTap Tap Revenge, which is uh, still the most popular game on the App Store. It's pretty crazy. You're not releasing numbers, but can you give me a sense of what this last week's been like in terms of numbers? Uh, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's out there in the hundreds of thousands, and uh, we're per day. Of, um, we're we're a couple, <laughs> of, a couple of days away from releasing numbers. Okay. But, um, but uh, the numbers are really big. Let me give you maybe let me give you a bit of context on sort of where we are as a company. Yeah. Um, we have. Right now, we have something like 15, more than 15 million installs of TapTap Tap Revenge on iPhones. That was a free game. Yeah. And when TapTap Tap Revenge 2 came out, uh, we had a couple of really big days. Uh, I think our top day, we had more than 200,000 downloads. Wow. Uh, and, and with TapTap Tap Revenge 3, um, we're seeing remarkable numbers. It's a, now, that's, we're going from a free game to a paid game, right? Yeah. Uh, but you know, usually it's you hear these numbers. It's cost a dollar. So the, yeah, exactly. So usually you hear these conversion numbers where it's like you know three percent, right? But uh, but the numbers are really big for us, and we're really excited. And it's, it shows the success you know of, of our product and our game, but it also shows sort of the traction of the app store, which is uh, still a, a phenomenon. What I wanted to talk to you about is what is it like to build an app for the iPhone right now? What, is it something you would recommend still doing, even with eighty thousand apps out there yeah. on this little device, right? So. Of course, the, the guy who's in the number one position will say, do an app. Sure. Right? <laughs> um, so so it's, this is a game changer device, right? We started this whole company. When you and I met, what, a year and a half ago to talk about this for the first time, our fundamental bet was the App Store was going to be a game changer. The iPhone was a game changer. It's about the mobile decade, right? Yeah. And, and what is it, two billion app downloads later, this has very much been a game changer. And, and I do think that this is your new computer. It's in your pocket. And, and because of that, there's big opportunities and big new companies. Uh, in the case of the App Store, what that means is that there are a number of companies, uh, including ours, that are doing very well financially. Uh, and, and some of those are startups like ours. Some of those are established companies like Electronic Arts, uh, Gameloft, that are executing very well on the platform. Yeah. The other thing that we're seeing is you're seeing every day uh, individual contributors, uh, one developer that makes it big. Yeah. And that maybe pays for your entire college education or, or more. Uh, and there are those opportunities. At the same time, you're competing with, what, 80,000 other apps uh, so the big challenge is breaking through the noise. Yeah. In fact, TapTap Tap, uh, Revenge started out as a single guy, didn't it? Yep. TapTap Tap Revenge was, uh, was started before the App Store even launched. As, uh, as I think you recall, before the App Store launched, within about, what, three, four weeks after the iPhone came out in, uh, on June 29, 2007, within weeks, hackers had figured out that this was really basically a Unix, a Linux uh, computer. and. I should be able to use it in China. I should be able to use it with T-Mobile. So people started jailbreaking the phone and really getting to the innards of it and, uh, and, and opening it up. And uh, uh, Tap Tap Revolution was one of the first, that's what it was called then, was one of the first games in this jailbreak world. So by the time the App Store launched, uh, there were half a million users or so that were already playing the game. Yeah. What, why is it successful? And, and can the success you've had translate to other people who are doing other kinds of apps you know are there lessons that you've learned that if you do this you'll get you know some adoption or you'll get some PR or you'll get some uh, you know notice on the phone well definitely one of the things we've had going in our favor is that we were one of the first ones right when yeah. tap tap revenge came out it was the first real game and it was free and and so that got us straight to number one uh, it's also a very compelling category it was a music game that was familiar to people that had played I don't know, dance dance revolution guitar hero etc uh, and it was on a device that people thought of as a music player and a game device. Uh, so those are things that we have in our favor that are sometimes hard to replicate for other people. Yeah. Um, uh, having said that, there are other lessons that apply uh, that apply for everybody that led launches today. And, and one of those is sort of be faithful to the platform and be faithful to the community. And, and what I mean by that is being faithful to the platform is that Tap Tap Revenge, as have most of the other apps that are really getting buzz out there, getting buzz out there is the number one thing you want to do. You want people yeah. talking about you. Uh, and to get people to talk about you, you want to do justice to the platform. You want it to feel like this thing was built for the iPhone and by people that love the platform. Yeah. Um, because it has this thing has a, f a unique set of features between the accelerometer and the touchscreen uh, and the network capabilities, and it has these push capabilities and all these other things you can do with it. And if you really love those, te th those technologies and you really build something uh, that feels like it was built for them, yeah. um, 
That's really important. It helps <laughs> bloggers notice you and people on Twitter notice you. It helps any user love the product and, and make them feel like they're getting something special. Because, I mean, this is like the internet, right? When the internet came out, it's like, oh my God, there are these new things you can do that you couldn't do before. Yeah. And, and that's what the iPhone is like. And when you put out something that does things that are a little bit different, uh, that really feel like they were built for the platform, as opposed to just repurposing old content and bringing it to, that's a lot of what people are excited about, I I is something that has that sense of integrity. One thing you've done different for the community is you are in that retail space here in Palo Alto. That's the second half, right? The second half is being sort of true to your community. And what I mean by that is that, <laughs> man, you're competing with 80,000 other apps and you're trying to get into the top 100, right? And some of those apps have 10 million users. That, that would be us, right? Uh, or more. And, and some of those apps have big dollars to spend. Yeah. But you don't have that because you're an individual de de developer, you're a small company. Um, and you also don't have virality of the kind that you have on Facebook. Word doesn't spread sort of mechanically. There's nothing intrinsic in, in the way that the platform is built that spreads the word. Yeah. Except that it's a phone. And you use your phone to talk to your friends, uh, to send messages to your friends. Uh, and in that sense, it's the most viral platform ever, right? Yeah. It's the original viral channel. Uh, and so what you want to build is you want to build something that people want to tell their friends about, right? Yeah. And, and so the community aspect of that is, um, for example, in your app store description, you really don't have the ability to write back to people on the app store. Yeah. People leave ratings and reviews and you cannot comment. You cannot, you oh. cannot talk to that user. Whoa. <laughs> for example, on the app store, there's thousands and thousands of reviews and ratings and you can't really respond to them. You cannot set the record straight directly and comment and send an email to a user. But what you can do is you can go into your app description and write an update yeah. and tell people, hey folks, we've noticed you've got the following five problems you were working on them. And one of the things we have noticed that when you do that, when you use the app description, when you use your customer support form, when you use Facebook and Twitter, uh, people really notice that. Yep. And it makes them feel like uh, connected to your brand and to your company, and it makes them say positive things and spread the word about your product. So for us being you know, right here in downtown, and we have a guest book and we have posters and kids walk by, uh, it, it really helps spread that sense of goodwill and community. And to me, to me, that's sort of the big message of the Twitter era, yeah. uh, you know, Robert, and you know better than I do, right? But to me, 10 years ago, you could make some deal with AT&T and they would shove you through the channel and that's how your company would become successful. Yeah. Today, what's different is the people that create the buzz about your product are individuals. Yeah. And they've got tools like Twitter and Facebook. And if they like it, they will tell their friends. Uh, and so it's really important that you take care of those people and that you connect with those users uh, and, and that's the name of the game on the, on the App Store. How is the platform changing for you? For instance, uh, you have now have the ability to sell things in, in the app, yep. right? Before, you could only charge a dollar for your app yep. and that was the only revenue you could get. Yep. Tell me about how you're making money now. Well, Apple in, in June with the OS 3 and when the iPhone 3GS came out, they launched what's called in-app commerce. So within a paid app, you can now sell stuff. You can operate your own store. And Apple uh, uses the account relationships to complete the transaction for you and they charge the same 30% that they charge for when you sell an app uh, for in-app commerce. And Tap Tap Revenge is the first major example of that. A couple yeah. of other people have done in-app commerce, but it's been a couple of dozen items, maybe a couple of thousand items. Uh, with Tap Tap Revenge, we're going to announce our numbers in the next few days, but we're blowing away those numbers. Uh, we're seeing significant traction. So uh, now you can have virtual goods. You can sell stuff within Tap Tap Revenge. And so that's the reason, by the way, that Tap Tap Revenge used to be a free app. Uh, now it's a 99 cent app, and the, the main reason is that you need to sell your app to be able to offer in-app commerce. It's one of the rules of the App Store. So Apple requires that of us as a developer. So because of that, TapTap Tap Revenge is now a paid app, uh, but the upside is that we can have our own store. So, so here in TapTap Tap Revenge 3 is my store, and we are featuring Fall Out Boy. We're offering a free track. We offer a listing of the top songs that we are selling in the game. So we sell music uh, by uh, Tiesto, Blink-182, Fall Out Boy, all sorts of artists. We have something like uh, 55, uh, big big bands, big artists that we're selling in the game. Uh, two songs for a dollar, and we're also selling six packs for three dollars. Uh, and so it allows us to offer users a much bigger catalog of music uh, at really affordable prices. It's a, big, it's a big thing. I think it's going to be the big thing this holiday season, uh, and I'm delighted music, that we're sort of the innovators Music there. is really a big deal for your company. I, I love the music in, in here. That's yeah. one of the 
things of playing it, it's like, oh, that's a cool song. It gets me going, yep. you know? Well, I think I think the big difference is between, say, if you think about what came before us, we're following in the footsteps of Guitar Hero and Rock Band, right? Yep. And and those guys was all about being a musician and loving rock music and wanting to be a rock star. Uh, what Tap Tap Revenge is all about, it's about having fun with music you love when you're on the go. Yep. So it's much more casual. It's about all ages and all kinds of musical tastes. So we have Keith Thurman in here. We have Johnny Cash. We have Leonard Skinner in, in the game. Uh, as well as a lot of rock music and dance music and some hip hop even. Um, and that's one of the fun things is that everybody loves music. And within App Commerce, we can now offer anybody the kind of music they love. What's uh, next for Tapulous? Uh, well, we're doing this launch. It's a big deal for us. It's yeah. a game changer for our company in terms of profitability, et cetera. Um, we are doing another big new title that's coming out uh, uh, just in coming in a couple of weeks. Uh, and then we've already announced, uh, I believe it was at the Apple keynote event that you may have noticed, we yeah. announced a new title uh, called Rhythm Ribbon. Yep. Uh, Rhythm Ribbon is another music game uh, that is completely original uh, that we built with Will I Am and with the Black Eyed Peas. Uh, and it and is you a, actually worked with him, right? We worked with Will. He's a friend of the company, and we've known each other. I've, I met him company. at TechCrunch. He's really smart. <laughs> I, well, he's I, a, I really enjoyed. He really understands culture, doesn't he? Yeah, he, he's a smart guy. He's a creative guy. He's a humble guy. He gets the culture, right? W whether it was sort of you know working with the Obama campaign or now with the Black Eyed Peas, biggest hit of the year, um, uh, smash hits with, with Boom Boom Pow, and I got a feeling. I think more than anybody that I've ever met, certainly, he understands where the culture is. And so it's been really fun working with him. He had an idea for a game. We're working together on it. Uh, we're launching the game uh, in the next month or so. It's called Rhythm Ribbon. And, and it's, a, it's a mixing and DJ game. So in this game, um, it is, it's, it's a music racer where you're racing to the beat. And if you do well, then the music is full and rich. And you can choose remixes. And I'm right here, I'm playing to Boom Boom Pow. And uh, we've demoed it. So it's on the Apple website. You can see the demo. Yep. And as you do well, the crowd applauds and uh, gives you gives you props. And if you do poorly, then uh, then you lose your great mix and the get sent back to level one, and you got to start over. So basically, you're a DJ, you're making mixes, and it's a racing game. Uh, we're starting it with Black Eyed Peas. We're also bringing in uh, Tiesto, who's the biggest DJ in the world. Yep. Uh, he's providing the three first you downloadable levels. You can see, levels. by the way, how you use the platform. You're using the accelerometer to yep. take it's shaking. About, it's about surfing to the music and holding your device and flicking. Uh, it's again about downloadable content and using the network capabilities and the great audio and the great graphics in the iPhone. So Doesn't so that create uh, a new kind of conversationality in, in applications? Because I, if I see somebody doing that in a bus or in a park, yeah. I'm going to go, what the hell are you doing? You know, that's, who's going to go, I'm, gonna pl I'm playing Rhythm Rhythm. Yeah. And that's one of the things that's been really a real key. You were asking me earlier about sort of how do you be successful in the App Store. A lot of the apps that are doing well there's something that you want to show people. There's something that you see people do that's intriguing, right? And Ocarina by Smool did that. Um, and uh, there's a number of other games, the um, Shazam, you know, where you can record music. It's the kind of thing you want to show to your friends. I think Smool yeah. did another great job at that with the T-Pain game uh, where you could sing and, and your voice starts sounding like T-Pain. Yeah. Um, building an app that you, you want to, it does something that you want to show your friends uh, or that people are going to wonder, what are you doing? Uh, is one of the key things that you see successful developers do really, really effectively, and hopefully we're, we're not bad at it either. Very cool. Thank you so much. I know you have another appointment to go to, so thanks for spending a little bit of time, especially on your big week. Thank you, Robert. Uh, really fun as, as always. Tap Tap Revenge 3.0, right? Three. Number Very one, cool. three times in a row now, so we're really psyched. Very cool. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.